headquarters with a very, very special interview today. Um, and I just want to introduce our guests and our panel as fast the panel as fast as possible so that we can introduce the guests. So we have Mav from Xbox Ultimate. We have PK from PK Entertainment and GRG and Four Guys Recorders and Mavs from Four Guys Recorders as well. And we have 3Bit who's on probably more shows than I know. He's on Xbox Ultimate, Fun Pop, um, and Boom Show. And then we have a very special guest joining us tonight who does the voice of Pan Am and many other voices that you may or may not recognize uh, in different animes and cartoons. Emily Zeller, how are you doing tonight? Hey, doing well, thanks. Well, thank you for joining us. And uh, one of the first questions that we always ask is, how did you get your start in your career path of voice acting? Yeah, um, well, I have been performing my entire life. So when I was a kid, I was a dancer and sang and played music and then um, got into theater and was doing that all through college and was a professional dancer actually for a while. Um, and then when I was living in Hong Kong, um, I saw an audition for uh, a dubbing company. And so auditioned for them, took to it like a fish to water, did that for a couple of years and like full time um, and then was gigging outside of that. And then when I came back to the States, um, kind of had to start over again with voiceover but my real foot in the door actually was with BBC Audiobooks America. Um, and so I started doing audiobooks. And then when I was in New York, um, you know, it was through networking and all of that. But yeah, That's so it's kind, of, it's, awesome. it's kind of been all my life. But voiceover technically, I guess, started in 2006. What was the very first cartoon that you uh, did a voiceover in? Ooh, um, Maria Sama. It was uh, Maria Watches Over Us, I think was the English translation. It was this anime that, this is funny, I actually haven't talked about this anywhere else. It was this anime that was uh, all these like, like, like dozens of teenage girls who were at this private boarding school and um it was pretty it's pretty tame outside of the fact that they sometimes had love affairs with each other which was amazing <laughs> but they hired me because I was able to do a teenage girl voice um and multiple teenage girl voices and then we did we did an episode four episodes a day a season a week um Wow. Which, if you know anything about dubbing, that's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's, a, lot. that's yeah. a lot. Yeah. I mean, we were dubbing, right? So we weren't laying down the original audio on it. So it it can expedite the process a bit when you do it that way. But we were really going fast. So I did tons of other shows after that. But that was the first one. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask, would you do that much dub in such a short time? How many retakes did you have to do or um, they were satisfied with the actual voiceover? Did you have to do it over so many times? Yeah, no, I mean, look, this was in China, right? So there's um, expediency is uh, a high priority. And we were dubbing in a, in a way that's different from the way that they do it now and different from the way that it happens in the States. So we had the entire team available. And so anybody who was in the scene was in the room. And then we would just like play off of each other, which changes, it's, you know, the way that dubbing happens now, it's usually one person who goes in and then you have a director and then you record that way, which like I think overall is more efficient. Um, but in terms of the performances, I think we got better performances when we were all in the room and we could all play off of each other because there was no second guessing what that what your line feeding in was going to feel like and what you could respond to. We were all there. So, yeah. Did you do something similar with Cyberpunk? Was there anyone in the room or uh, no, did cyberpunk, you? Cyberpunk. 
Cyberpunk was all one. I mean, we had a director and the director did most of the lines for everybody. So he was the cohesive piece for sure. So you sure nobody was in that room? Because that was pretty convincing. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. No, nope, it was just me. That's awesome. So yeah. did did the voice or, or would you say when you first jumped on the project to, to be Pan Am, uh, did that character evolve in any way? Or when you jumped on the project, it was pretty much like, yes, that's Pan Am. Uh, she's always been uh, very loyal to <laughs> like her, her crew and everything. Like, did anything evolve or, or change over time, would you say? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, the, the honest answer is I don't really know uh, because I wasn't privy to what the writing process was. So they could have had her entire thing laid out. I mean, they've been working on it for years, right? So by the time they got to me, maybe it was already done. But when I auditioned, I auditioned for her big scenes, for her like fieriness, for her forwardness, for her ability to like, based coming out of loyalty, right? But this, this fire, that, that's what they wanted to make sure I could do. So when I went in and started recording, we started with that stuff too. And that was sort of her mode. It was like to get into the character, we went like, okay, how, like, let's, let's get on the phone and cuss somebody out. Like, that's how we're going to get into Pan Am. But then we got to the scene where she was like, got to be really laid back and chill and intimate. And that was a surprise to me. I don't know that it was a surprise to the people who had written it, but for me, it was a really pleasant surprise because it was like, oh yeah, awesome. We get to like color her in a little bit more and give her some more depth. Let me ask you, um, when you was doing this part, how did, which part of Pan Am did you have fun with? And would, and without, I, I don't know if you could talk about it, but uh, any future, Pan Am scenes coming down that could be like badass because she has some badass parts in that game for sure. Yeah, she definitely does. I I enjoyed every single minute of working on her. So I can't I can't say that any one aspect is more badass than another. Um, and I have no idea about anything in the future. I just don't, oh. they keep they keep us in the dark for good reason, but they do. <laughs> so we're we're in the dark. I can't spill anything because I don't know. So. Would, would you say that's the like uh, uh, the most famous character now that you've played? And um, if so, is that your favorite character that you've played, or is there another one that was you had you hold to a higher regard? Yeah, no, I I think I lucked out that this most popular character is also a really cool character. Yeah, no, it's the same for both. She's my favorite for sure so far. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and you must you you had probably lots of different dialogue was it confusing for you like because uh, you know there's different paths and, and 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 I guess different ways the character can go in the story like when you're writing or when you're reading the script uh do you get confused at any point or or do they kind of direct you like oh this is if you went this route or if this is yeah. if we went this way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the director was really good about, who was Pierce O'Toole, by the way, um, mm -hmm. who did a really good job of, um, you know, telling us what was going on at any given moment. So yeah, the script was incredibly complicated, but in terms of like my interaction with it was fairly straightforward. He kept it so that it was organized. Now we have awesome. some questions in the chat already. Um, oh. Infinite asks, when you took the gig to be Pan Am, did you know how big this game was going to be? No. <laughs> no. No, I didn't. Um, when I walked into, well, right, right after I got, after I got cast, um, then it was, I think I got a phone call from my agent who said, okay, you know, it's this game. It's like, oh, okay. And then I walked in in the first session they um, they played the trailer um, that had just been released with with Keanu in it, and I was like, 
right. Okay. <laughs> 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 cool, 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 cool. It's all cool. Let's just keep, let's just keep the cool hat on. It's fine. Not going to freak out. <laughs> Did you know how big of a character she was at that time either? Or is it just, you no, know, you were... No, no. In fact, throughout the entire process, I had no idea. It was like, yeah, you know, the, the writer told me, you know, this game has like 300 something characters. Or I, I don't even know. It was hundreds of characters. And, um, and so I was like, okay, well, I'm one of them. And wow, they, I keep getting called back. Okay, cool. Great. We've got another adventure. Okay, cool. I'm back. And by the end of it, at the very end, um, the director turns to me and he's kind of like, you know, I think out of the line count, your character, your character might have the most lines out of anybody outside of V. And I was like, wait, really? What? <laughs> okay. Um, but even then, I still didn't understand quite because I, I was not privy to, you know, what the other characters really were like and what interactions would be like with them for the player character. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't until the game came out that I started to really, it started to sink in. It was like, oh, wow, she's a had, deal. <laughs> has that role like opened up some like other like opportunities now uh, for you? Have you noticed like people reaching out to you more because of how good of a job you did with that? Um, not really. I mean, I have my agent and they're wonderful, um, but you know, it's, we're in the middle of a pandemic or I yeah. hopefully toward the end of a pandemic. Um, so work has generally been kind of slow, but um, I don't know, it, it, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. It's that's that's crazy really to me to cool think because like Pan Am is like crazy popular. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's it's like one of the more popular characters that came out. That's not a primary character, right? Uh, right. She, she wasn't the protagonist of of the game, and I, for me, it seemed like more people were talking about her than any other character in the game. And it's yeah. not every day that that happens. So. Um, I think that was a lot of the um, work that you put into it that actually helped develop the character, not just the writing. Right. So. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Do you, it, do uh, you see a little, do you see Pan Am inside of you? Like, do you see uh, her personality being part of your personality or is that your alter ego? Because um, like I said, a lot of those scenes are super convincing and I'm yeah. just curious. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the way that I would put it is uh, I see myself in her. So she's kind of like a lot of aspects of myself times 10, right? Mm. So it's just, yeah, I, she made a lot of sense to me. I get it. I get her. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm with you. Yeah, something I did notice when I was playing the game is she comes off as like very rough uh and when you first meet her and, you, and you're like wow this character is rude and then <laughs> as you <laughs> play the game uh you realize how soft-hearted she was I always I always really admired that about her character for sure yeah. um wh when you're when you were doing the lines for the game um can you can you like picture what you were doing in some of those moments like like uh like different moments in the game, like uh, maybe how you were feeling at that time, or maybe you have a story uh, in, I guess, uh, a line in the game, like every time you play the game, does that make sense? Like when you play the game and you think about, uh, maybe you say a line, can you picture what you're thinking when, when you did those, like, some of those lines? What I was like thinking a, when I was delivering the lines? Like yeah, was, yeah. Do you yeah. have like a moment like I mean, that stands out to you? look, I'm an actor, right? So like part of the pleasure and work of this job is to get into it. And so when they described a scene in my mind, I was there. I wasn't in some analog scene in the real world, which is a tool for sure. But for me, it was easy to get into this world of cyberpunk and to be like, oh yeah, we're at the bar. Oh yeah, we're in the cabin. Oh yeah, I'm on a tank and I'm about to like, blow shit up like it was <laughs> yeah so i was just there i felt That's very awesome. very connected yeah so i'm glad that came through i'm glad yeah. that so. dragon wolf has a question in the chat he asked when you got a feel for the character were you allowed to ad-lib with lines you felt she would say 
Uh, no, there wasn't any ad libbing. It was all it was all scripted. Yeah, with the exception of you know like any extra sounds, breaths, things like that, I added. But in terms of the actual words, those were strictly scripted. Yeah. Oh, because you, I mean, when we play cyberpunk and we interact with Pan Am, it almost mm -hmm. feels so natural for her. So you are very talented to be able to take the script and. Yeah make it just seem so on the spot personality. I mean, that was a fantastic job that you did. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You know, it's, um, I think that it can be really easy to fall into what a character sounds like, you know, especially in voiceover. If you think like, Oh wow, that person has a great voice or just like the sound of whatever, but it's not the sound actually that you're connected to mostly it's the delivery right so it's the emotional connection behind it it's what the intention is behind it thanks so yeah i mean you know for pan am i didn't put on a voice it was my voice but i put on a character right i was like okay me then then like let's turn up the volume on that by like 10 and put you in this scenario all right this is what you're going to sound like as opposed to like when i've done a dolphin right then you have to make a dolphin noise or if you're gonna if i've done a a giant 600 pound chef lady with a cleaver in her hand she's gonna sound very specific right but it's about it's about what their bodies are like and like where they're coming from and it's so it's not just i'm going to make myself sound this way it's it's about what's happening in the scene how would you say is is like because uh, you worked on a couple uh, you voiced a couple of different video games would you say the process for cyberpunk is different from some of your other stuff and, and how how is it different I guess would you say um that's a good question I it didn't feel that different to me um yeah my I mean my my experience in games is honestly fairly limited at this point. Yes, I've done other games, but I haven't done like 50 other games. You know, it's been a handful. So yet, hopefully, hopefully there's more, but um, yeah, no, it just, it felt, it made a lot of sense. It didn't feel like anything really caught me off guard or anything like that. So, yeah. Did you have a chance to talk to Keanu Reeves at all through the process? No, Keanu, <laughs> talk to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully but someday. I will say that it has to be cool to be a character in a game with somebody like Keanu Reeves. I mean, like, that's a standout moment in, I would think, anybody's career, which is really cool. So that, that was just, I mean, it's just fantastic. Yeah, and he's a, you know, he's been a particular... Um, personage that I've looked up to anyway he's a really cool guy and you know he's also a mixed guy and just I don't know he's been around for a long time and seems really really awesome so I and I like that he's not just done movies that he's moving into voiceover now and you know if it I'm not I'm not in love with the idea of celebrity I think that that's a really complicated thing and I don't know that I, I'm just not in love with that idea, but I do like him individually. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. What was your relationship with him, like on the set and all that, or on, on she, doing the voiceovers? Never, Nada. Never met. He was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you never met him, PK. I thought she seen him. I thought she was like, "Oh, that's Keanu." No, <laughs> that's where that was. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, with uh, a, pro a development process, I guess of, of CD Projekt Red was always to um, their technology, I, I guess, for the voices was to, uh, they had like a really cool voice system. So different, um, I, I guess, actresses can do the same character with different languages. Have you, have you uh, gotten to hear the different panems <laughs> or like different no, uh, voices? No, yeah, I okay. haven't yet. No, I would love to though. That seems really cool. I mean, yeah. then that feels like, that feels so close also to what we did with dubbing, right? Like we, yeah. we tried to match what the original sounded like as much as possible. 
so what did you do exactly for pokemon like what um was it like were you actual pokemon characters or like were you like um any of the actual pokemon themselves um no so from what i remember the pokemon themselves are all the japanese that they we don't dub those those are the right. original pokemon so i was bryony um in team team rocket uh in the tv show and then in the pokemon xy movie um hoopla and the clash of ages i was the princess character in that so she's a guest character but is for that movie yeah it seems like a wide range you know yeah. doing yeah. something like pokemon and then playing uh this badass female uh in, in, in pan am right that's just ready to yeah you know, hey, it's their job it's their job right <laughs> i know that's, right. that's, what, that's, that's right. what i'm saying <laughs> yeah it's cool the princess was you know just like classic princess and then the bryony character was super snarky like really bitchy uh in the best way and then um is it okay? I hope it's okay for me to cuss on this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, bleep me. Um, yeah. And I mean, obviously, Pan Am is cool too. Yeah. So, what, what was your uh, work like on Last of Us? Uh, I know you, you did some some things on Last of Us, right? Can, yeah, you, can you talk a little a bit few, about that? I did a few minor voices. There wasn't anybody, um, you know, any major characters to really talk about, but it was really cool to work with that team. They, they really had their, their process was different from CD Project Red, um, but I was also less involved in that. And, you know, obviously I was with the cyberpunk team a lot longer, um, so I got more familiar with it. But yeah, I, they, they really, they were great. They were great. They were really well organized and really worked well together as a group. Um, and managed all of the actors that were in the space really well as well it was very efficient um but also like they cared a lot about really getting the best performances out of everybody even for super minor characters and i really appreciated that so were you just in a voice booth or was it um was there any facial capture or any of that or was it mostly no like, facial you know? capture okay yeah not for <laughs> that one yeah yeah and there wasn't any for project red either that was all just voice yeah some people it's been funny i've been seeing some comments online where like she looks nothing like pan am and i'm like yeah I, they didn't model her after me they <laughs> like i did the voice i didn't do the person like it wasn't the animation model i think um, i think some of those people would be surprised to realize like that how different you know a voice actor could be from a character you know looks wise sometimes like a female voice actor could play a male character in a cartoon or show and vice versa. Um, and I don't think a lot of people out there realize that it's really about, like you said earlier, it's about getting into the character and having an emotional connection with the character is what really makes that character. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we do have a question from the chat from Stephen P. And he asks, do you play the games that you work on? Uh, no, I haven't. No, I, uh, I wasn't allowed to play video games growing up. Um, and so I never really had a chance to learn. And so by the time I was old enough to try to get into it, I was already really focused on performing. Um, and that's where most of my time went. But that said, all of my closest friends have almost almost all been gamers. So I've been very close to that world, including like cousins and stuff. It was just like, we weren't allowed to play. So I, whenever I'd go to my cousin's house, I'd be like, can we play Super Mario, please? And I'd just kill him within the first five seconds every single time, but I was still wanted to play, you know? So this kind of, I still have that relationship where I'm like, okay, can I watch you play? I love this. Can I watch you play? Even though I'm not technically playing, you know what I mean? Did you go and watch other people play like on Twitch and stuff like that uh, to to watch Pan Am, you know, and I, see people's seen, interactions? I've seen like uh, people have posted on YouTube series of um, interactions that they've had with her. So I've seen that. I haven't seen on Twitch. No. So um, I know that they they have uh, CD Projekt Red has laid out this like timeline 
this vague timeline where there there is going to be more content coming down the road for cyberpunk is is your character in an ongoing relationship still with them about potential like future stuff uh, have you heard anything no sir i <laughs> do not know <laughs> <laughs> i tried <laughs> yeah. I tried. No, I genuinely don't know. I'm not even lying to you. I just don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I've heard that too. And I'm like, cool. It'd be nice to get a call, but I don't know. So. Yeah. When the, when the game first launched, and and uh, I, I guess you, it was a, a a flurry of new players playing Cyberpunk. Um, what was the response like on your end? Did you get uh, I guess people calling you like, wow, look at Pan Am. Like, what, what was that like when the first, when, when the game first launched? Like, what was that like? Yeah, um, it was interesting. Um, I, you know, as a, as a voiceover actor who's mostly worked in, you know, dubbing and animation and even in games, like it, I've never done a, a game as big as this or had such a big part in a game that's big as this. So I kind of have been able to, do my work in relative obscurity um and then my instagram started blowing up and at first i was responding to messages so that was that was fine and they were really they were really sweet and then eventually it was like oh my god i have to work and eat food today i can't respond to these messages <laughs> all the, you know so it was they were and they were all sweet messages um but eventually I was like, oh, okay, okay. I need to, I'm so sorry, I can't respond. And then I needed to step away. So I'm sorry, everybody who sent me a DM. I wish I could, but I just don't have time. Do you still yeah. get DMs um, just from being the character? Honestly, I had to turn off the feature because it was, I couldn't, I couldn't handle um, the influx. I also, I mean, not even turning off notifications and stuff. Um, yeah, oh, I, you know, and I have a, I don't have a publicist. I don't have a marketing person. I don't, I have an agent who, who helps me with work, but for all the other stuff, I don't have a personal assistant. I don't, you know, it's just me. So there's, I'm spending most of my time recording and managing that side of things. And uh, social media is very taxing for me. So I have to be pretty limited about the way that I interact with it. Uh, I know in like some interviews people always act or ask uh, the actors like did you bring anything home from this set and I know you're in a different <laughs> sort of <laughs> mindset where you, you're voice actors but did they maybe uh, give you anything from Pan Am uh, maybe like a I, I don't know something from the character that, that you, you got back from that experience. <laughs> No, but that's a great idea. I would, yeah. I would love that. Some swag. That'd be awesome. <laughs> no, no experience. I have it. It's all in my brain. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing tangible. Yeah. Uh, PK, did you have any questions? Yeah. So um, I just wanted to know uh, what kind of projects do you, are you looking to work on going forward or is there anything exciting that you, you're thinking about fitting yourself into? I mean, uh, like I said, this this uh, cyberpunk and, and Pokemon, even though I'm a Pokemon fan, I don't know if you know, but I am a Pokemon fan. I had, did see all those movies and uh, definitely a big fan of, of Magirna and all those Pokemon. But in general, what what project do you are you excited to look forward to? Like what medium are you are you looking to get back more, push more into video game uh, voiceovers? cartoons or whatnot well so that's that's an interesting question it's a complicated question or a complicated answer so i i am still in the video game world and auditioning um but that's about the most that i can do i can't sort of push any further than that all i can do is do my best with any auditions that come through so yeah i would love to do more animation and more video game stuff. Um, in fact, there is, there is an animated series that I did a voice for that I can't, I can't talk about, but I'm excited for when it does come out. Um, it was really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm always, always doing that and hoping to have more work in that realm. But in the meantime, most of my work is audiobooks. 
So I don't know if you guys know this, but I've recorded like over 500 audiobooks. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. I started in 2009. I've been full time with that mostly uh, since 2012. So is, is there any like real notable like books or uh, yeah. that? Well, it depends on how, depends on how nerdy you are. <laughs> well, um, I, I'm not nerdy <laughs> at all, but maybe somebody <laughs> that's listening, you know. Would, yeah, would they know. might. Um, I did uh, the Marie Kondo, Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. That's probably the biggest book that I ever did. Um, and I did uh, Gulp by Mary Roach. Mary Roach is a pop science writer. She does some really cool stuff. If you're into nonfiction and into science, check out her stuff. She's hilarious. And she takes on like funky topics. So Gulp was about the digestive system. Um, talks mm -hmm. about like how Elvis, how the, real, the real way Elvis died and all that stuff. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I've gotten to do a whole huge range of stuff. The Poppy War trilogy um, was really popular. That's a sort of historic, well, it's a fantasy military fiction. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm doing like a book a week. So I'm doing a, a ton of stuff. Did, did you start doing that maybe because you also like to read or is that just uh, another way of getting gigs? You know, at first it was just a way, it was just another gig. It was like, oh yeah, I really want to do voiceover. This is a way to do voiceover. But it really suited me because I have been a reader my whole life and it's not easy work. I mean, it's really, it's really demanding. Um, and I'm in a booth by myself six hours a day, you know? So that takes a certain kind of personality to be able to do that and to want to and be able to play a hundred characters in any given book and do all the narration and stuff day in and day out. So, but no. I love it. I love it. But that's dope that you're passionate about that. Um, do you think that you might come back after your uh, project that does drop that you can't talk about to come talk to us about it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd love to be back. You guys seem cool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Looks like um, Caitlin in the chat says she knows all about Marie Kondo, and now she's oh. excited. Oh, cool! <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that also, you know, when I recorded it, I had no idea the the publishing company, which was Tantor. They just said, "Yeah, you know, can we get this? Can we expedite this? Can you get this done before the new year? Because we kind of want to give it a little extra marketing push for the new year." That's all I knew, and then it just went. Poof. <clears throat> now for for like some of these gigs that you are getting um i guess you know covid is a thing <laughs> so are, are you are, are you doing most of these like in your own setup uh like at home or do they sometimes ask you like hey we need you to come in and uh voice these parts yeah for the most part people have been pretty understanding of letting work happen from home um and i have a professional setup at home so that's not as challenging for me. There are some actors certainly who had to scramble once COVID hit, but for me, I already had a setup because of the, the books thing. So, yeah, but even, even then some, uh, some publishers, um, you know, wanted me to come into a studio and then they had to transition. <clears throat> so yeah, now I record from home for just about everybody now, yeah. And actually, you guys asked about this. I forgot to mention um, <laughs> a room full of dudes. Um, so <laughs> uh, I, uh, I've started producing a little bit and uh, I've produced a series of short story romance and erotica, which is mm. not exclusive for women. In fact, I've gotten some feedback from men who are like, oh, this is amazing. I love it. Wait, wait, so, do you do the voiceovers for that too? I am one of the characters in that series. What? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's called Nice and Naughty. And you can find it on Audible or anywhere that you anywhere that you buy audiobooks. <clears throat> I can give you guys a link for that if you're interested. Yes. Yeah. That but. sounds dope. <laughs> hey, look, hey, look, I, I am I do have Amazon. So uh, hopefully it's all on there too. Right. Yeah. Well, Audible is owned by Amazon. Yeah. So yeah. Um yeah, yeah it's I'm a down. really cool series it's um they're like 
each episode is, is five episodes in this one season and they're 45 minutes each and they're set in Sunnyside, Queens. And this first season is just the beginning of what we hope will be a whole world of all different kinds of stories and all different kinds of people. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Queens at all, but it's extremely diverse and in a beautiful way. And we wanted to really highlight that and to bring out these stories about interesting people. So, yeah. and it's steamy. Cool. It's also steamy. <laughs> so I'm going to be honest with my wife likes stuff like that. And so she's, she might have right heard about it already. So well, maybe. Her. Well, we don't, you know, we don't have, we're an independent publishing. We're, we're just starting. So we don't have any marketing or any, this is my marketing. <laughs> Here it is. Um, yeah. And the first half is the romance. The second half is the erotica. So the idea is like a romance to sweeten your morning coffee and erotica to spice up your evening wine. So if you're not comfortable with one or the other, like if it's like you don't want the spicy or if you only want the spicy, you can just spicy, skip. spicy all day. <laughs> I know. I, <laughs> hey, look, we, I know we can link that down in the description, too, after the show. So yeah. a lot yeah, of the viewers, if they if they need to uh, definitely link up on that, we'll we'll get all that taken care of for you as well. Right on. Thanks. Now you said awesome. where. So so you, you is it like you and a couple of like other, I guess, voice actress friends or like how how is that? Are you starting like your own company for doing that stuff? Or Yeah, yeah. We're starting our own company. It's me and another woman, um, Gabra Zachman, who is an author and uh, narrator. So and, and some of these books are are. I guess what is, what is the narration style? Are you like I guess um, narrating the book and it's going back and forth between different voices, don't or is it mostly it. like I want to be spoiled? Know. I don't want to be spoiled. I want to enjoy the experience. Now. Okay, so, sorry, Pika. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I well, won't spoil it. Yeah, yeah we'll let PK uh, read these books. We'll have your mystery. <laughs> So we already know you have your first cust. You have one of your customers right there on the show. Um, I have no shame. Okay, I have hey, none. That's right. We don't have shame. We're all about positivity, man. There's nothing to be ashamed of. So uh, this leads me to a question because I I did look at your website and I saw that you did do a lot of uh, audiobooks as well. So mm-hmm. does it take more time to do one audiobook? versus the lines for pan am like how long hmm. did it take you to do pan am versus an audiobook it's really hard to compare it's like apples and oranges um so because you know with pan am you're just i was just the one character you're one you're one character and all you're delivering are their dialogue you're not doing you're not, it's, it wouldn't be like, you know, whatever, it's whatever line she has. And then, and then Pan Am walks over to da, 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 the narration. I mean, like she looked at the sky and she did all, all that, like in your head stuff. None of that's present in a video game, but in an audiobook, that's the majority of what you're doing is you're like behind the scenes, what's going on in people's heads and what's going on in the, in the world around. And then like dialogue gets peppered in, you know what I'm saying? So it's a completely different approach. Um, for audiobooks, it's usually about two studio hours to one produced hour. Um, and that's the other thing with video games is that like, I don't have a runtime for all of her lines all in a row, right? Like I can't say like, okay, she had a total of four hours of audio. I, I honestly have no idea. So yeah, but oh, generally who- you do it in like, four hour chunks when you're recording for for well actually it depends it depends on how much stuff you have but for for audiobooks it's like six hour days that you're doing um and by the end of it you want to hope to get you know two and a half or three finished hours done oh wow yeah and since you're producing that i guess the editing is probably uh, pain. <laughs> <laughs> the editing that, that is important. Mean, yeah. yeah, no, the editing, we, we hired an editor to do. Um, that is not something, I mean, I could learn. I think it's super interesting, um, but I just haven't had the time yet to do that. And there are people who are better at it than me and they deserve work. So I hire them. That's awesome. Yeah. 
now speaking with, of hiring to work do you do any cameos for birthdays or any of that stuff i am on cameo yeah so i do i do okay we need to get that link down too as well you know that's <laughs> hey don't judge me okay don't judge me no that's fine that's fine um yeah yeah i'm on cameo um when when you first got into voice acting was there like a person or or uh someone that really inspired you like wow i want to that that's really cool i want to jump into that was there like a specific voice actor or actress yeah. or, or did you just sort of uh jump into it no there's been a few there's been a few i've wanted to do voices ever since i was a little girl you know so i don't know if you picked up on this but my parents were quite strict right. Um, so we weren't allowed to do too much except for like watch PBS and Disney movies. So um, Disney movies we watched and I from a young age was able to sound like a lot of them and was like, I sound just like them. I want to do that. I want to this. I want to do that. I want to like sing for Disney. I want to do a voice. Um, and then so Leia Salonga, Salonga was one of the first. Um, she's a Filipino American American actress who did a lot of voices for Disney. And then my first book that I ever listened to was a children's book and it was Danny Glover. And he did with a very controversial story now, um, but it was Br'er Rabbit and the Tar Baby and he read it. And that, I mean, he's magical. It just captivated me. And I was like, oh, that's, that's beautiful. It's back burner sort of like stored right because it's not as shiny the books that aren't as shiny as a video or a, or a movie or something right but I go back to that and it's like I want to be able to bring a story alive in the same way that people like him or Patrick Stewart or whoever do and then the woman who got me into games is Sarah Elmale who's amazing um, and talented and so she's she's definitely somebody I look up to too just for her. She's always doing cool projects. She cares a lot about games. Um, she's really active, especially indie games. She's really supportive of um, those and, and she's a great actress. So, yeah. It's pretty crazy as somebody that grew up not even being allowed to play games, grew up to become a voice actress in um, highly controversial slash big uh, super high budget game uh, involving a female character that has a lot of fans um, for, for different reasons. Right. Um, and uh, go on. And then you're doing like the, the book stuff you're doing, the, the, the stuff that you, with the business you just started, it's just kind of like a stark contrast, I guess, to where you, I guess what you thought you'd be doing, I guess. At, at yeah. Age, so. It's funny. I actually have a funny story about that. So my kindergarten teacher said um, to my parents in like the whatever quarterly report or whatever it was back in the 80s, I don't know what they're doing now, um, but she was like, okay, so the thing that, that Emily really needs to work on is she really needs to work on her skills reading out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess you worked on it. Yeah, I worked on it. Good, uh, pretty good on that. <laughs> good advice from the kindergarten teacher, I guess. Huh? Right? So you never know. You never know. <laughs> Just because they say it's the thing you can't do when you're that age doesn't mean yeah. you're not going to end up doing it. Now, okay. uh, a quick question on the cyberpunk uh, for Pan Am. Did you... Uh, the, all the lines that you did, um, I don't know if they were all pre-COVID or were they post-COVID. So did you have to do any of them from your house or did you get to go out to the studio to, the, to do it all? No, we did the majority of our recording pre-COVID. Yeah. The only thing I think that I recorded from my setup um, was the art book. Um, so we did some of that some of that from my studio or actually all of that from my studio, but for the actual Pan Am lines, I think we did that all in the studio. Yeah. You have a lot of lines with, with a V. I, I know you said you didn't meet Keanu. Did you 
get to talk to V while you're doing these lines or or no I haven't met um Jeremy or Gavin um they yeah no um hopefully when we can all meet in person again and do a convention or something we can all meet each other that'd be awesome um but they did have the process worked such that sometimes none of their stuff was recorded and it was me going blank like just just off of the script and it was that's it and then there were some times when female v had recorded her stuff but male v hadn't so then i would just interact with female v for those lines even though it could have gone either way and then there were sometimes there's the other way only male v had recorded and so i could only interact with his voice um, and then there were some times when both of them had already been recorded and I could listen to either one. Um, yeah. So, and it was the same vice versa for them. Some of the lines that they did with Pan Am were without me recorded. And then some of them, because I had recorded first, they got to hear me and then respond to me. So. So what's that like when you start recording and you're, you're, you're pausing and not hearing anything back and then you, and then you do the next line, then you do the same thing, you do the next line, but then eventually you hear a voice come back at you, right? And it's like, oh, okay. Is it is it like a click moment where like, okay, now you really start to understand where this is going as an actor or is it uh, the same process? No, it's, um, we go line by line. So we do basically moment by moment. Right. So it's not like they're playing a scene at me and one, two, three, go, right? Yeah. It's like, no, no, we're going through line by line with what's happening and exactly in that moment. So, okay. yeah, it was just nicer when you get to, it's, it, it, you know, it gives you an added dimension when you can hear the person you're playing against um, or with. It must have been really cool. It seems like you, you, you kind of imagine the world in your head, I guess, at that point then, right? Because yep. no, no one's really talking to you. But maybe, I guess besides maybe the director jumping in occasionally. Exactly. Like, hey, yeah. here's how you should say this line. Okay. That's, right. That must have so been the- really cool though. Yeah, 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 it is. It's a lot of fun. Um, The director would not, uh, a director who knows what they're doing is not going to what's called line read for you. So they're not going to say, this is how I want you to say it and then read you the line. They would say like, this is what they're feeling. This is what's going on right now. This is how big or how small we want it or whatever. And then it's go. So the rest is actually really up to the actor. what the director might do is read the other person's lines for you. So they like pretend to be the other person. Yeah. Now with, with cyberpunk, um, and I, I know you can't talk about, well, you said you were lying, you know, there, there's there's um, DLC for cyberpunk that's potentially coming and, and all that different stuff. Um, with cyberpunk, what, like walking away from the project and you're looking at the character Pan Am, um, what, uh, I, I guess I'm, what I'm trying to say is like, what did you really take away from the whole experience of you jumping in the booth for, I guess, how long was it? I'm not sure. Um, but basically the whole process of, of you voicing this character for so long uh, and, and you getting attached to the character what what is your overall I guess experience uh, from from voicing that character that is now Panam? Um, well, as long as I have my memory with her with me, she's staying with me. It's so I'm so so grateful to have been on this project and to have gotten to do such an awesome character. Um, so she's always going to be with me, and it, you know if if Cedar Project Red ever calls me back and wants me to do more, she's going to be right there because she's, she's there now. She's just a character that exists inside. So. She is the central, um, in my opinion, the central piece of my story playing Mm. uh, cyberpunk for sure. I call her up. I listen, listen, let me tell you, I call (laughs) her up on the cell phone wishing you had another line going. Cause I was like, I love this little interaction, but I wish it was more right. So um, definitely, definitely want more coming down the pipe because I really enjoyed uh, your part, your piece, and definitely enjoyed the game and what you brought to it. And because really, I didn't even know what was coming down because when the character first met 
when V first met her, I didn't know what to expect. I just thought this was going to turn out, and I'm not spoiling the game, but turn out to be one of the other situations that end up not being fruitful, if you get what I'm saying. So, um, and it and it turned out to be even more than I thought. And I was like, yo, how can I get this to happen? You know, how can I? I was looking up guys and everything like, yo, I got to get this to happen. It's got to be a okay. thing. I'm going to say something about this. Okay. So for all of the sessions that I came in, of which there were many, right? It took, it took, it was over the course of many months of coming in here and there. <clears throat> for the um, most intimate scene that she has, um, that maybe took all of like 15 minutes or a half hour. Months, guys, months hours and hours and hours on all the other stuff 15 minutes so like so when she was first getting popular and people were like how to romance pan am how to romance pan am, i was like really yo She's so you, much more than this i'm not <laughs> saying like this. <laughs> which i i haven't even had uh, the opportunity to romance pan am because i chose female v so uh, pk okay. well, to know. be fair a lot of guys end up spending months and months and months trying to romance yes. a woman and that only ends up lasting 15 minutes hey look <laughs> let me tell you let me tell you it's it's the best 15 minutes don't be hating it's, it's, just, a, a, it's just a realistic video game is what it it's, is what it is is <laughs> i'm gonna tell you what it is and nike you see you see her as uh from a man's perspective you you want to wife this woman she is she has got your back. Loyalty is her whole arc. And when yep. you see that, you're like, man, I got to, she's got to be on my team, right? She got, she, she won hundred. And that's, that's why it's, it's kind of like you, you got to figure out how can you make this relationship because she is loyal. That was her biggest and best attribute on her whole arc because that was her main struggle, right? With her family. It, it was a lot of loyalty issues, right? They didn't trust her and she didn't trust her fixer, et cetera, et cetera. But mm -hmm. that, that is what drove, at least in my mind, I might not, maybe all the other guys have different perspectives. For me, that's why I was like, man, because it, like, like kind of like three bit touched on at first she was kind of, you know, she was just, she was cutting, right? But then I'm like, who is this? <laughs> but, at, but, <laughs> but once you yeah. see the dynamic between her and her people, you like and then you see loyalty is her number. That's what she wore on her chest. Right. That is what. Uh, of course, she was attractive um, character, but that's what the main attraction was. Is the fact that you knew that she will be down for whatever. That's your Bonnie and Clyde right there. If you going down, she going down with you. And I'm yeah. just keeping it real. That's what it really was. Mm -hmm. That's one I mean, of the most beautiful things you, about her. Yeah. You hear us describing Pan Am, how, how <laughs> like, like from our perspective, right? But obviously, you are Pan Am. So, <laughs> how <laughs> how would you describe her character? I, I guess from from your perspective, like no, you hear think, us saying the word. Okay, we're, we're pretty close. You would yeah, say? I think PK hit it on the head. Yeah, <laughs> it's she's she's loyal for sure. And you know, if anybody still hasn't figured out how to romance Pan Am. The most important thing is respect, right? She cares about integrity. And that's one of the things that I, that is the thing that I love the most about her is that she has integrity. And so she demands that from anybody she's gonna interact with or she's not gonna waste your time. So mm. if you wanna interact with her, you behave with the almost, don't try to get anything out of her. Just be like, you know, full of integrity yourself and she's gonna to respond to that, so. Okay, mm. so you, are you aware of the uh, Pan Am or Judy or, or Judy controversy out there? The the question oh, yeah. everybody's either a Pan Am or a Judy person, <laughs> which is so silly. Why can't you be both? <laughs> See, both? exactly. That's the way I felt. Right? <laughs> like I love Pan Am's personality in the game. Like I thought the personality of Pan Am is fantastic. Everything else, I was a Judy person in the game. Listen, I'm the opposite. Also, also I thought Judy was cool, Judy. but but <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, Pan Am hands down, is killing it. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm cool with Judy. We we could be friends, but you know, nah, Pan Am just 
she, it, just, she just hit differently. I'm telling you. It's me. like it's Twilight funny. from back in the day. Is like you're either Team Edward or that. Team yeah. the other guy. But like oh, with Cyberpunk, yeah. it was like Team Pan Am or Team Judy. You know. <laughs> totally, I love it. Yeah. Y'all should get T-shirts. Yes, <laughs> well, that's yeah. not a bad idea. T-shirts. Yes, <laughs> you, you're teasing me, like... but I'm I'm so serious. Where is that at? Yeah, I know which one PK would buy. 100%. Or, know Carlo, team... it seemed like you're Team Judy. Is is that what I'm hearing, Carlo? No, she's like Team listen, Judy. He told listen, me before listen, the interview. That's what he said. I, that's he what said he's, he's, he's Team, team Judy. Judy. Yeah. He's yep. just afraid listen. to admit it. And no, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> From Pan Am. See, yeah. I can't trust Judy, but I could trust Pan Am. <laughs> so, like, mm. you know what I mean? Like, if if I was in the video game, if I was V or Keanu Reeves and I had to go do a mission. Pan Am is the one I want on my side because she's gonna Facts. make sure that she pulls you out alive. She's the one that's Facts. got your back. So, yeah, but you're attracted okay. to the one that you can't trust. I mean, it is. <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know, man. I, you know, Clowns, I'm, I'm cool with that. But I, I, the interactions I had with Judy, man, she, she would definitely cut. And with the oh, quickness, yeah. man. I agree. Yeah. She would bail in a heartbeat. Yeah. Absolutely. Something goes wrong, she's out of there. So I mean, but Pan Am, she's riding in with a tank if something goes wrong. Oh, yeah, and okay. all the nomads. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did um, they like early on show you like uh any cutscenes uh, uh while you were voice acting or or did you see that way after you saw it way after? I saw it after it came out. I didn't even know what wow. it was gonna look like. Yeah. Yeah, I had That's no idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I first saw the animation of Pan Am, I was like, oh, she's gorgeous. Oh my Facts. God. Facts. Whoa. Yeah, no, I had no idea. Uh, it was all personality. Yeah, that's it. So. And how long did it take to voice the entire character? You know, so many people are asking me, I really should go back and look so that I can, I can answer this question. I don't yeah. know. It was many... It was weeks, but it wasn't like, you know, I'd be there every single day for weeks and weeks. So I would like come in for four or five sessions and then I wouldn't do anything for a couple of months and then I'd come back and for another four or five sessions and I wouldn't do anything for a couple of months and then like a session here, a session there. That's why it's really hard for me to say is because mm -hmm. like it was over the course of, I don't know, a year I, and yeah. So was was oh, okay. Sorry. Go, oh go no, ahead, I'm go sorry. Ahead. You can finish your question, because this um, is a, a different subject. Gosh, what, what was I gonna say? <laughs> um, I was I was gonna say, uh, was there like a large gap from when you like finally finished all your lines and when the game came out? Was there was there like a huge gap there? Would you say? Uh, I think there was an appropriate gap. You know, mm -hmm. we knew that we were sort of the last piece the voiceovers before they just tie everything together, right? Um, so they needed time to integrate the, the takes and all of the recordings into the game and into the animation. So they needed time for that. So we couldn't be, you know, right before the release because they need to be able to do that work. So there was, there was a gap, sure, yeah. So, um... but, Real quick, because I know we're coming up to the hour. Um, so one thing that I want to say before we get out of here is that I don't know if you remember the E3 presentation. Uh, I believe it was E3. When Keanu Reeves came out on stage and there was a fan in the crowd and the fan was like, you're breathtaking. And Keanu's like, no, you're breathtaking. Do you remember that moment? I know I didn't. I wasn't aware of that. You moment. never no. saw that? Okay, no, so I that never saw that. That went viral, and that was like a huge moment for everybody. That got everybody hyped up. Look, Keanu Reeves, okay. and the guy in the crowd who was there, uh, he was a fan fest member, um, Xbox fan fest. And his name is Peter Sark, and I'm friends with him. So he actually got Keanu Reeves' attention, and Keanu Reeves retweeted, you know, his stuff. When so I'm gonna be like, you know, who we interviewed? Pan Am, and she likes Keanu Reeves. So I'm gonna let <laughs> so him know. You're saying he's gonna he's gonna connect me to Keanu and we can finally Keanu. And I, I well I don't him. I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if it's that much of a personal connection or if it's more like just a social media connection. Uh, but still, I think, maybe Keanu can see the interview some way. 
I think Keanu's like most famous memes at this point involve him saying you're breathtaking right i think so he's aware he's got to be aware of how big of a thing this is because if you like just type into giphy or whatever like keanu you're gonna see that you know you're breathtaking you're breathtaking with him pointing right so <laughs> uh it's a big deal i think for keanu so there's a connection there we um to this little podcast and interview uh, maybe we can be the bridge <laughs> right on <laughs> All right, I'm That's counting on happen, you guys. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yep, definitely gonna try it for you. So, um, before we get out of here, uh, anybody else have any questions? We're at the exact one hour mark. Uh, I don't have any questions. I just want to say you did a, a fantastic job <laughs> voicing Pan Am. And uh, when I when I think about Pan Am, I think about the moments like. Uh, when she really cares for V and V's getting really sick. And then the, the sort of, uh, I guess, emotional uh, connection she has with V in those, in those moments, like when she's just like, no, V, <laughs> I, that, great. You, you did fantastic. So uh, I just thank want to thank you. you for coming. And uh, thank you so much. You did great. You're so sweet. And thank you for I, your questions. I agree. Good questions. I agree with that 100 that you did a great job. Like I said, it was really convincing. And um, I got really into that story, seriously, not not just be, because of the relationship. It was Rocky with, um, with Silverhand, and then he had an anchor with Pan Am, at least in my story. And that, that really hit home for me, right? Um, basically, Silverhand had his anchor, which was uh, a fixer, uh, which was Pan Am's fixer, and then he had his anchor, which was like the next generation, the way you look at it. So, um, same. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, same. Uh, the uh, game for me, the highlights of it was a story based on the uh, interaction with the characters. Very strong, well written characters, well uh, acted characters. Uh, it brought more meaning to the game than just being a open world shoot 'em up game right it actually had a lot of heart to it uh so uh just like they were saying and not, and not just you the other actors as well i thought they all did a really good job in this game specifically uh your character stood out uh, above the rest i think to most people so that's a very a good testament to to your job that you did so uh, you guys are you so that. sweet thank you i really appreciate it and you know like just like everybody else in the panel said emily i think you did a fantastic job you brought pan am to life and i'm actually going to start checking out some of your audiobooks as well um cool. uh -oh. yeah, i think you got a great pacing no not the ones that you're checking out i just want to <laughs> check out like you know the difference i mean you can I think... yeah. Ooh, see? <laughs> you can i just <laughs> mean <laughs> sorry to cut you off you, you yeah. Carl's, Carl's trying no, to speak right. let's be nice hey, now he's, blushing. <laughs> he's just trying to be loyal to judy just yeah right saying. exactly sorry, i mean i get judy. it judy's hot too but sorry you know, judy just... <laughs> <laughs> it's awkward because judy's my mom's name so like just uh... <laughs> that's awesome well, um, yeah, so, sorry, go ahead, Carla. And my I sister's no, name is Pan I, Am, so I'm I just have, really confused. I have no no family members named Pan Am, so I have no regrets. <laughs> so um Emily, where can where can people find you and what you're up to? Um I usually post when I have a big project or something, will be on my social media accounts. So that's on Instagram or Twitter. Um, I am technically on Facebook, but I don't, I check that even less. Um, I'm more often on Instagram and Twitter and that's um, at Z-W-O-O-M-A-N at z -O -O -M -A -N, at Okay. And do you, I know that some voice actors have um, like services where they, um, people can buy autographs or anything like that. Do you, your agent have anything set up where they can get like autographs from you? Not autographs at the time, um, at this time. Um, hopefully once conventions pick up again, I will be able to attend conventions and that's where I can do that sort of thing. But not, not right now. Right now, all is only the cameo. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And to everybody watching, I hope to see you guys when we do the next interview. Thank you, everybody. Bye.